Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel, The Intersection. This tutorial on how to create a database in a ASP.NET website without using any code. And within this database, I will create two tables and then join those these two tables using the foreign key and also create a uh, two controls, a drop list and a grid view and retrieve data from both tables. So enjoy it and we will start. I have Visual Studio open. Click on File, New, Project. Web, select ASB.NET website, give your solution a name. I gave my solution a name, creating a database and two tables, and then give your project a name. I gave my project a name, open lab, and then click OK. Save your solution. So let's not start by adding our app data folder. Right click on the project name, add ASB.NET folder, and here's our app data folder. Now right click on the app data folder, add a new item, and we're going to add a database. Give your database a name, maybe college database. That's a good name, and then click add. Database is created. Now we're going to go to the server explorer and right click on the table, tables folder, add a new table. Table design open. The first thing I will do is um, name my data, my table. So let's name this table students. And then I will just um, keep that ID primary key, but I will uh, just like add to it students ID, add the word students. So I, if I have multiple tables, I know which ID is. I'm going to make the um, the primary key auto increment. I'm going to right click on the primary key, go to the property, and in the property, I will go to the identity specification. I click on this plus sign and then double click on the identity so it becomes true, not false. And now it's always going to be increment by one. That's the first thing I'm going to do. Now, the second thing I will do, I'm going to add my other fields. So I'm going to collect first name. So first name, I'm going to make the first name in varchar. And let's make it 150 so we have enough space if we have long names. Then I'm going to collect the last name. I added uh, the last name and made it in varchar. Added all my columns uh, to my uh, first table. We need to update. Click on update. and then update database. Now we're going to create the second table. So we're going to uh, refresh so we can see that table here. So if you don't see it right away, right click, add a new table. And this table we are going to name it students grades. So the name students grades and I've also made the ID students underscore grades underscore ID. Remember, you can't have spaces. I'm going to make this also also a auto increment. So I'm going to right click, go to its property, and then under the identity specification, make it a true. Close that. Now I'm going to add my columns, column names to this table. So I'm going to pause and do them all. I added a column for the test. Added a column for the grade. Of course, the test is text, so it's going to be in bar char. And I made it 25. And then the grade is going to be a number, so I made an integer. And then you see here, student ID. Student ID is the primary key in the table students. So each stu student can make multiple tests. So I'm going to go back here and make this is a foreign key. So I can tie these two tables together. So I go here, right click on the foreign keys, add new foreign key, and then type in 
type in student's ID. So your foreign key will be a student's ID. So that's step number one. Step number two, you're going to come down here in the column, leave these two brackets, and then type in the primary, uh, the foreign key here one more time. And then go to the table. The table name is student's table. That's the students, the primary key from the student's table. Students. And then two table column. That's the primary key of that table. Now make sure the 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 naming the name here is exact, and also the uh, foreign key is exact. So once the data entered into, once the two tables have been created and designed, uh, well this one is. Once the design is finished, we update and update database. So once these two tables have been designed, now I am going to enter some data into these tables. So let me refresh here. Here's uh, my students table. I will right click on it and show table data and um, pause and add some values. I added all the um, data to the students table. So I made uh, names and uh, last names, first names, last names, emails. I use a random generator to uh, to create names and emails and, and birth dates. So now let's add the uh, data to the grades. And I have the test and the grade and the student's ID. Student ID is a foreign key. So the foreign key has to be has to be one, two, three, four, five, six, can't be seven. So it has to be one of these six values. So I'm gonna pause and um, I'm going to pause and add data to the um, to the grades. So I'm going to pause. I'm going to add the test, the grade, and the foreign key. Added my data to the um, students' grades table. So you, you can see student one had uh, taken an ASP.NET test, and also HTML test, and also C++ test. Student five taken one exam which is Java 1 since 2 three exams and you can see that now I'm gonna put the grades here so I'm gonna put give them numbers here so I entered some values for their grades now I will I'm done with the database the design and the uh, adding the tables and now I'm uh, add my form I to click on the project add a form web form and leave it the name default I have um, designed my um, my form and I added um, I created a style sheet uh, so we just like save time I'm gonna link the style sheet by dragging it and dragging the style sheet file itself not the folder and this is what the design look like and so I'm gonna add um, I'm gonna drop down list and I also would add grid view. I'm going to hit enter multiple times here. And um, here's my grid view. And I will add a SQL data source. Actually, I'm going to add two SQL data sources. And I will configure this data source first. Of course, the first time you see the database itself. And click Next. Let's call this as first connection string. Next. What I want to do is I want to display the, um, the names. And then when I click on the names, then they will be displayed in the grid, their score, their test, the test name and the score. So let's go into the students and let's select the student's ID and their last name. In the future, I'll show you how to combine first names and last names. So we're going to do that and then we're going to click on uh, return only unique rows and the next. And I'm not going to test it. I'm just going to click finish. So now I am going to con uh, 
also configure this data source and this data source will be the same connection string and in this grid I would like to see their their test and their grade so that's what I want to see uh, their test and their grade once I select the um, once I select the uh, their name from the drop-down box so uh, done click next and then finish now I'm gonna go back to my um, to my drop-down and configure the drop-down itself so the select a data source will be SQL data source 1 and make sure you enable auto post back so you can get all the uh, of course the uh, the uh, here you're gonna select the um, the last name so the, the you want to display the last name and then the looking through the primary key which is the student ID so the student ID will not be displayed the the last name will be displayed click OK and make sure you enable auto post back so you can get every students that took multiple exams you give them all and we are going to configure our um, grid view and we are going to select the SQL source the uh, SQL data source 2 and that shows the test and the grade then I'm going to go back to the SQL data source and configure the data source to add my query I click next and then where I'm going to do the where clause where the students ID where the students ID in the control and the control is drop down list accept the query click add so you see it here click OK next and then finish now right click and view in the browser zoom is our first students um, Cochran and he's he took he took three tests ASP.NET, HTML, and C++, I got 95 in the ASP.NET, 99 on the HTML, 78 in the C++. Here's our second student. He took two, quiz, two classes, but he doesn't have a grade for the JavaScript one. We'll check that out. And then here's Coffee. He has taken two tests with their grades. And here's Miller. Miller didn't take any test so we're gonna check that out also let's go back to our database I wasn't I didn't save the JavaScript exam grade so in Costa now we see the JavaScript exam grade the other students that we need to check is is Miller Miller's Miller's uh, primary key or students ID number is six I don't have any exams taken by him so they don't see number six in there for the students ID in the students ID column so you don't see number six in this so you say I have one three one one five two so we don't have six at all so that's why you wouldn't see any result for him and to show you that let's go and look at the uh, the students as you can see Miller is number six and he did not take any exam so that's why you see it like that I'm just gonna fix this a little bit so I'm gonna add more CSS and show it to you for the final time added more styles I made them two columns so you can see the drop-down box in here and then the the grid view right to the um, right of it so now it looks much better than when we had it before again Miller doesn't have any exam so you don't see any result for him but you see everybody else has either one exam or multiple exams uh, good luck I hope this is will help you and I'll see you in the next video bye bye now